Vintage Audio Attic Repair and Restoration. Today I'll be using a Sound Technology ST10A, which was a tape recorder test system that was used back in the 1980s to test open reel decks and cassette decks. Um, I'll also be using a Nakamichi Dragon in the testing. I'll be testing three different tape cassette tape types, type 1, type 2, and also metal. Um, we're going to see today how well each of those formulas can perform after they've been calibrated in the Nach Nakamichi Dragon and then tested by the uh, ST1510A. I th I'm looking forward to it. I'm really not sure uh, how it's going to turn out, to be honest with you. Um, I see a lot of info out there about cassettes and how they perform, but I haven't seen a test like this, so I thought maybe I'd give it a try. Um, got three different tapes. Let's see if I can grab, grab them while I'm holding this. Uh, here's one of them. It's the Type 1. It's a uh, 90 minute, it's a uh, Sony uh, Type 1 cassette. We're going to give him a try. Uh, our Type 2 is a TD TDK SA90. Um, and our metal tape is going to be a Fuji a Metal Z. So we're going to use these three tapes, three different formulas, and let's see how well the Dragon and the ST1510 uh, says they work. Okay, first of all I'm going to calibrate all three of the tapes. The Type 1, the Type 2, and the uh, Metal tape uh, in the Nakamichi Dragon. So I'll start with the Type 1. Let's uh, See if I can hold the camera here. I'm kind of holding this. I probably ought to get a tripod or something, right? But anyway, I'm going to stick the uh, Type 1 in the Dragon. Uh, I need to... This is a... Uh, let's see, what are we on? Alright, I need to push the EX button on the Dragon. Uh, I need to s change the EQ to 120. I need to turn the Dolby off, uh, and I think I think we got everything ready to calibrate. So I will uh, let's put it into pause record. All right, and the dragon's turned in, turned its little little arrow to red, and I think we're ready to go. And I can push the. Uh, the uh, level here, the 400 hertz. So I'm going to do that. So I think we're we're good. Okay, and we got to do a little bit of adjust. You see this other uh, light right below the level, next to the EX is lit. So that's telling me which knobs to turn. So it looks like our left channel here is uh, show that yeah a little high. That's not too bad. And our right channel, well, that's a little better. And our right channel, a little low. Well, there, yeah. Okay. That's probably pretty good. All right, it's good enough anyway. So now we'll push the 15 kilohertz bias button, which is right up here across from the uh, 400. Focus this damn thing, huh? Maybe the light's not quite good enough. I probably ought to do this not at night, huh? Okay, I'm gonna push push the bias, uh, 15 kilohertz, and now you can see the lights on these little uh, controls below that are lit. So we go back over here, and we can see we're a little high. So. I'm going to play with the left one. I'm moving it down kind of slow here. And we're trying to get it to that calibrate, if you can see that. See that CAL? That's just about right for the left channel. But Now we'll do the right. Ah, went close. That's better. Well, wait a minute. 
there. Okay, that's good. Now we can hit this reset button up here and uh, this will calibrate the deck uh, the best uh, it can for this particular tape. So I'm going to hit reset. The dragon automatically goes back and uh, rewinds the tape and uh, that one ought to be ready to go. So we'll go to the next one. Okay, next we've got a uh, TDK SA90, which is a Type 2 cassette. So we'll put that in the Dragon and do the same calibration that we did on the uh, Sony uh, Type 1 cassette. So here we go. Put him in here. Okay, now we've got to change the EQ uh, button here on this guy. And on the Dragon, we've got to change also to SX, so the middle button. So I think we're ready to go here, and we'll put it, uh, put it in pause, record. Well, that was pretty stupid. Hold on. There. That's better. And again, the deck's just sitting here. It's ready to record. And we'll do the same thing uh, again. We'll hit the uh, 400 hertz button first. And there go the meters. And this time, you can see uh, the knobs to adjust are adjacent with the... Um, with the SX uh, button now. So we shall, what do we got? He's a little bit, the right channel's a little high, so we'll move him. And besides that, that looks pretty good, right? It's on the calibrate, so we will call that good. And then I'll hit the uh, 15 kilohertz button up here. And you can see the knobs to adjust lit up there, so it tells me what to do. And, and these are, a bit higher so we'll move that down and move that down to the calibration level and that looks uh, pretty good so we'll hit the reset here and then go to the next tape let's see yep so he's rewinding and that's ready to go okay for our metal tape, we're going to use a uh, Fuji. I'm going to head, go ahead and put that in the Dragon so it can calibrate it. All right. All right. Um, okay, here we need to go down and push the ZX button, which is right down here. Uh, we don't have to change the uh, equalization on it and as before our Dolby's off so I think we're ready to go I'll put it in pause record and uh, we'll do the same thing again we'll push the uh, 400 Hertz level button okay and she's sky's a little a little high so we turn the left one, right, and down it goes. And then I'll turn the right one here. And we got it at the calibration level, right, just about. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so we will now hit the 15,000 15, hertz button here. And... She's a little, and again, you know, the dragon lights up and tells you here's the ones you ought to play with to, to adjust this. So this guy here, the left one, is a little, a little high, so we'll just, that's not too bad, is it? And the right one, he might be just a hair high, so let's, all right, that looks pretty good, huh? Yep. So we're ready to go. So again, what do we do to save these changes in the Dragon? We hit the reset button. 
and then she's going to rewind back to the beginning and uh, stop. So, all right, we've got our tapes all calibrated in the Dragon, and now it's time to do some testing. Okay, well, we've calibrated all of the tapes uh, in the Dragon, and now we're going to use a piece of a test equipment from the early 1980s. Uh, it's called a Sound Technology 1510A. And these were state-of-the-art back in the day testing tape decks like this Dragon. And uh, also is a great tool for reel-to-reel -reel decks also. It'll test just about any of the parameters that are in your manual on any type of uh, cassette or open reel deck. Or an L cassette deck too. It'll also do turntables and cartridges, but that's that's uh, that's for uh, that's for another video. But you can see here, there's inputs and outputs, just like you'd have on your receiver or your preamp. And the outputs from the 1510A go to the inputs of the Dragon, and the inputs go from the output of the dra from the outputs of the Dragon. So as I said, it'll test just about everything that's in your manual. And uh, well, I think we're about ready to go. Um, and like I say, usually I use this to test tape decks and I thought, well, there's not a whole lot out there testing tapes. There's people testing them, but uh, not in any type of a measured way. So anyway, I think we're about ready to go and I'm going to show you how it powers up. Uh, I think I am. Here's the power switch click it up, it lights, and um, takes it a minute to warm up. I can hear the fan come up, and now you can see the, uh, the initialization screen come up. So uh, I think we're about ready to go here, and so let's do some cassette testing and see how it goes. Okay, we're ready to go. Uh, Got the Nakamichi Dragon hooked up to my 1510A, and we're going to start off with the uh, Sony 90 Minute Type 1 cassette and uh, see what kind of frequency response we can get out of it. So, here we go. Um, go ahead and put it in the Nakamichi. We we'll have to choose frequency response down on the 1510A. Uh, all the testing on tape decks, look at your uh, specifications in the back of your manual. They test them at minus 20 dB. All those frequency responses, it'll say minus 20 dB. So we happen to have a switch right here that will do that for us. Now who records at minus 20 dB because when I do this you're gonna see up here on these meters it's gonna run right around the minus right around 20 dB you'd be running it at zero right if you were recording something if you had it down here you'd be thinking well hell there's something wrong you know why you know I, I need to get a little more level the levels up a little closer to zero or even above right but anyway that's how they uh, do the specifications with the tape decks so we're all set up. You can see that minus 20 dB up at the top. Um, we'll go ahead and I think we're ready to run it. Uh, as I said, I'll have to, I already did this, but I'll hit frequency response again just to show you how that works. And as I said, we're at minus 20 dB. I'll have to put the Nakamichi into record. I'll do that. So now you can see the Nakamichi's under record. And what I'm going to do on the 1510A, I'm going, going to run it when it has a sweep mode. We're just going to do it one time. You may be able to see that single button is pushed in. And down here at the start, I'm going to hit both. Seeing that this is a three head deck, um, we can go ahead and output the test and read the test right off the uh, Nakamichi at the same time. So we kind of kill two birds with one stone. So go ahead and show you again the display on the 1510A and I'm going to hit the start. I'm going to hit the, bo the both button. So here we go. Now you see this display cleared and you may be able to hear, there's a speaker in this thing. 
You see a little line going? I'm not sure if you're picking up that noise or not. The 1510A will run from 20 hertz to 40,000 kilohertz. So it starts up here at the top. You see this line kind of running here? Um, it's doing a test right now, and I don't think you can see it. It's doing a test on the right channel, and it's little dots. You know, there's just little dots that go down along there. And um, once it gets down here to the end, you see it's almost down there. It's going to then do the left channel, and it's going to start back up here on this high frequency end. Kind of see it coming? See that little line coming up? And it's on the other one. You probably can't see it too good, but kind of get the idea here. Now it's doing the left channel. And once it gets, can you hear that? You can hear the frequencies going down. Now way up here at 40,000 hertz, and down here where it is now, you know, probably it's around 30 hertz, much more difficult to hear. And as I said, these, the speaker in this isn't uh, a high fidelity speaker. So we're getting down here to the end. And you kind of see it running along there, and then it's done. It just, it just reset. So I'm gonna go up here and I'll turn off the uh, record mode here on the Nakamichi, and then we can go back down here and see uh, what we've got. So, this again is a Sony Type 1 tape. If you take a look, you see down in this bottom left corner, it says 10 dB, meaning each, each of those blocks are 10 dB between them. You know, so what we'll do, you can see two down here in the right corner, there's a one kilohertz. Um, I'll show you with the cursor. Let's see. I can get my hand down here. You see there's something called cursor position. You can see there's a line here kind of in the middle. Let's see if I can just move it down. See it moving? Well, as I move this, see the frequencies? 330, 350, 400. But we'll, I'll just hold it down and it'll make it go all the way down here to 20 hertz. And you can see at 20 hertz, we've got an L, and this is 0.1 dB, and then it's got an R, 2.3 dB. So we're, you know, within about 2.4 dB of each channel at, at 20 hertz. And down here at the lower frequencies, the 10, the 1510A will do it in one hertz increments. So see if I'm moving it to 22. There, now we got something to change. I'll just go back to 23. See, now look at 24. Left is 0.3 dB, right is 2.1. I'll just go back one. Well, I went back two, but now we've got 0.1 and 2.4. So you're probably not going to look at it this close down here, right? So here we're at 31 hertz. And, you know, the two channels, you know, we've, we're, we're a couple of dB off. And then you, that's one thing to look to. You, you look at this it, between the channels, you think, well, that's quite a bit. They should be on top of each other. But you remember, this is each of these blocks are 10 dB. So, as I said, this is only a couple dB difference between the channels. You know, you got minus 0.7 dB plus 0 0.1. So, you got a 1.7 dB difference between them. So, you know, even though it looks like there's some space there, there's not a lot of space, but we won't spend a ton of time down there. But here's one kilohertz. Um, you know, uh, again, the channels are exact, right? This is where they're just about perfect, you know, between each other. Two kilohertz, and I'm going to move this thing kind of quickly. 7.3 kilohertz, 8.3 kilohertz. Again, very, very close, right? 10 kilohertz, you know, minus 0.8, plus 0.4 for the right, you know, so you're like 1.2 dB. Keep, you could be down, you could be a little low, a little high, so it's really minus 0.8, right, you math wizards, and plus 0.4, right, so there's really a, a, a 1.2 dB difference between them. But, um, so we're at 10 kilohertz, and still damn flat, right? 
Here's 13 kilohertz. Now here, we're both down 1 dB and 0.4 dB, so it's the difference between them, right? So we're really 1.4 dB between channels. And all the way out to 15 and a half, we're still, you know, pretty darn good. You know, we're, we're getting a little bit further down, right? One and a half dB compared to 2.8, but again, a 1.3 dB difference, and that's still pretty darn good, I think, for a type one tape. And 16.5, now we're three dB down, right? Uh, on the left channel. And here's three and a half, even at 17, you know, so, so, so the point is here, you're still, if you were recording music on this, Nah, you're, you're probably not going to hear any difference here. Um, even way out to 17.5. Here's 18.5. Now you start, get a little drop off, right? You got 4 dB, 8.5. You know, so you're starting to get a little drop off here now. When you get up above 17.5... You get up to about 18 and you start to get a little bit of a drop off. And now at 20 kilohertz, much more, right? And we'll go way out, here's 25. It didn't even read, couldn't even read it on the right channel and it's down 18 dB on the left. So 24, again, same. So 22, it's down quite a bit. 21, 20. But really, you know, in that, so between that 17 and a half and 18 and a half, right? Still not terrible. So this tape will certainly go out in this Nakamichi. Uh, this, this will certainly go plus or minus 3 dB all the way uh, out to 17.5 uh, kilohertz. So um, that's not bad, you know, for a, for a type one tape. So uh, pretty happy with that, with that run. And that, and, and, and that would give you a, a decent recording, I think. And that's something we're gonna do uh, later on. We're actually gonna record with these and uh, not only see what the test equipment says, but what do, what do your ears say? So that's the uh, Sony type one. Now it's the uh, Type 2, the TDK SA90's uh, turn. So um, I'll have to come up here and uh, we gotta switch to SX and also my uh, equalization. I gotta change that. So uh, I think we're ready to go. That's where we calibrated this tape at. So we'll load her up into the Nakamichi. Um, all right, she's ready to go. Back down here to the uh, 1510A, we'll hit frequency response. Um, again, we're set at minus 20 dB. Um, single sweep and we'll hit both if we're start mode. So um, I'll put the Dragon uh, into record, and then I'm going to uh, start the 15 uh, 10 A's frequency frequency response test. So here we go. And once again, you can see the See the line? That's the right channel. Little dots. And you can hear it going through the frequencies until you can't, right? So once it gets down here to the end, it'll do just like uh, when we tested the other tape. It'll start the left channel. And once the left channel is done, um, it'll stop and we'll take a look and see what we got. So we're just about there to the end, and we ought to see her start down here again. Yeah, and there it goes. There's the left channel, and it's a solid line, even though I don't think you can tell that from, from here. Maybe you can. And again, you hear it going through the frequencies, just past a thousand hertz. It's recording those tones onto the tape and then 
the Dragons playing them back and the 15 10As analyzing them on the fly and uh, we'll see uh, how the Type 2 TDK uh, worked out. Just about done and we'll see her to hit a reset. She did. So we'll get up here, turn him off. Whoops, I turned him off tonight. Yep. And back down to the uh, display of what we got. So again, I always leave, you don't have to leave the cursor here. You can put the cursor wherever you want. It's kind of like the, the mid spot there, one kilohertz. And we'll just, I'm just gonna take it all the way down to the left. I think you saw this last time. Don't have to go through every frequency. But down here at 20 hertz, all the way to the left. And again, the channels, both of them are very close together. And I'm gonna just take this cursor, if you hold it down, she'll just quickly go up the graph. Um, and if not, um, you can just click it one one at a time. So I'll show you that. And um, again, we're 10 dB per division here. So uh, again, you know, the two channels, you can tell they're just about on top of each other. And as I said, this is 10 dB per division. I ought to go back down there though. They're a little spread here. Just to show you again, that even though there's a spread, you know, it's it's less than a half of a dB. You can see it on the graph here, right? But it, it's very, very close. So within a dB. And on this guy, we'll go up here. We're at two kilohertz. Again, almost identical um, with no loss or very little loss. Now get up to 10K. And now, you know, 1.2 dB down, 1.5. Um, you know, 11 and a half, 12K, 13K, 13 and a half, 15 and a half. We're still, you know, holding up there pretty good. 16 and a half, 3 dB and 2.6. Uh, 17 and a half, again, right around 3 dB. Uh, 18 and a half, still, you know, right around 3 dB, a little bit over, but not much. Uh, 20K, left channel is a little bit further down, but not much. Again, it's starting to go up a little bit at 20K. Uh, 21K, got a little bit, you know, a little bit more. Uh, then like 24K, I jumped ahead there a little bit, but you can tell, compared to the Type 1, there is a little more, it's getting a little bit more information out here than on the uh, Type 1. I think you remember, it just didn't have any data out here, you know, or very little. Um, even if we go out, we'll go to 27, it gets nothing, but even at 25, it starts to read a little bit something, at least on the left channel. And 24K, uh, 22K, so, so this Type 2 certainly has a little bit more extended high frequency response, right? A little bit. I mean, not a ton. The um, Type 1 actually came out here, as you recall, 17 and a half. We figured what? Between 17 and a half and 18 and a half, she was done. This one, you know, she's still pretty strong there. And... Um, you know, even up at 20K, that's not bad. So she's got, th this tape's got a little bit more uh, high frequency uh, extension to it than the Type 1. And we'll see again uh, how that carries out when we do some, uh, some music tests. So there's the TDK uh, Type 2 cassette test. Okay, now it's the uh, Fuji Metal Tape's turn. Uh, test it with the Dragon and the ST1510A and see how it does. So, put her in the Dragon. Uh, make sure that we have, yep, we've got the uh, ZX button pushed uh, where we calibrated it earlier. And I think uh, I might as well put it into record mode. So I've got the Dragon in record, it's ready to go. And again, we come down here, frequency response, minus 20 dB. Um, yep, yeah, single sweep mode, and I think we're ready to go. Just hit the uh, both button here. 
and we ought to start seeing yeah there it goes um, as I mentioned before it's a uh, little uh, dots for the right channel which it tests first you can hear the frequencies as it goes through them there's a frequency generator in the 1510A and it's sending them to the dragon the dragons recording them and then seeing that the dragon as I mentioned before is a three head deck we can monitor it right off the playhead and we can kind of do two things at once here the uh, 1510A sends the tones the dragon records them and plays them back for us all at the same time and now we ought to go to the left channel and there it goes I just seen it come up from the bottom there and you can probably hear again the tones and the left channel is a single line and it's about on top of the other one again you can hear the tones till you get down here to the lower frequencies and and as I said this little speaker in this 1510A I'm, I don't know if it can produce anything under a hundred Hertz but anyway just about done and yep she just reset so we know that's set so I'll go up here and uh, turn off the dragon I to get it out of play out of record mode uh, and we'll come back down here and see what we what we got so this is the Fuji metal uh, go down to the end uh, again like I did before you know I'll just hold this I'm down here with my finger on this cursor switch and I'll just hold it down to the left get down here on the end um, this this one is again that looks like the widest spread I can see again I don't know what I'm looking at the back of my camera and it's only right at a DB or so spread way down here like I said before this cursor when I'm clicking it down in that right hand corner it's changing the frequency that we're we're inspecting so here's 25 Hertz and they're right together and again I'll just come up through these because you know here's 165 here's 175 if, if you've got an issue with something sometimes this can help you uh, troubleshoot a particular frequency and you can set this 1510A up just to look at certain frequencies but anyway that's another that's for another video and um, what I'll do now is we're at 200 Hertz I'm just gonna kinda move this cursor ahead and you can see we're up at two and a half kilohertz and you can kinda of see my fingers down in here I know the reflection of them because I'm on the cursor button here I am and uh, so I can move this along and show you the screen at the same time and still show you the rest of the data so three and a half kilohertz again look at the left and the right channel you know very close together right tenth of a db there a tenth of a db there three tenths of a db there at six and a half kilohertz we'll come up here to 10 again you know down 0.4 and 0.6 again very good and very close here's 12 1.1 and 0.4 again the channels are very close and not very much loss there 13 14 and a half 15 you know again you know I mean a couple DB down and 1.1 on the right channel again 16 and a half 17 and a half so right there you can tell it looks like we're gonna get a little more response out of this high frequency response out of the metal tape here's 18 and a half 20 4 and 2 you know 21 22 so we held you know we held we got a little bit more high-end response as you'd expect out of a out of a metal tape right and 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 the 1510a if we ran this over and over this is pretty representative of what you'd see if we if we ran this over again maybe the left channel would show 3 db and the right channel would show 1 db you know but this kind of tells you that um, this tape will easily go out to 20,000 Hertz uh, pretty darn flat and 21 you're still not bad 
22. You still got data there. I mean, you're down six and eight dB. Um, 24 couldn't read it. 25, but this shows you that. And, and maybe we do it again, and you'd get something out here. You know, but but not nothing useful. You know, the tapes the tapes done. The tape deck's done. <laughs> One of them are done, or both of them are done out here when you get up in the uh, middle 20s. But um, this certainly shows you that uh, the tape and this metal tape, along with the dragon, can take uh, can can do 20 to 20. 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz easily and really you can do above that. So that's the uh, Fuji metal. Well, I did some testing. Uh, what I did, um, I took a CD player and I hooked it straight into the Dragon. Um, I used the CD player just to have that low noise floor. You know, I didn't want to have anything I'm thinking, I wonder what that is. Is that the surface noise of a record or whatever? So I used the CD um, I used a couple different CDs, ones I know pretty well, and um, I tested all three uh, tape types. And um, I've got to tell you, the biggest surprise was the Type 1. The Type 1, I, I was sitting here, and I, you can see I still got my headphones on. Uh, I was using headphones with it, um, just so I could hear anything. And, and by the way, I recorded it with Dolby C, because I figured most people, that's what they're going to do with their cassette deck. They're going to have their Dolby on, whether it's B or C, whatever. So I thought that would be more valid. So I recorded it with with Dolby C. And, you know, again, the Dragon being a three-head deck, you can just hit the source button, the tape button, and go back and forth from them. And I'm telling you, I, I, I would have to listen a while to pick out which was which. It was that good. And that was the Type 1. So I won't go on too much about the Type 2 and the metal tape because they were just as outstanding too. But, but frankly, I, I couldn't tell the Type 1 from the Type 2 from the metal. I mean, it was really that good. And, and again, I used headphones and I used a couple different CDs that I know very well. So it was very surprising to me. There are many other cassette formulas that I didn't that I didn't touch on, but doing a Type One, a Type Two, and a metal tape, you know that that covers a lot of ground, and and most of the other formulas are somewhere in the middle of those. So I, I feel I got a a, a real good um, a real good feel for what a cassette tape can do. And, you know, I was, as I said, really surprised with the Type 1. But, you know, when you look at it, if you remember back in the video, when I was doing the testing with the Sound Technology 1510A, it was, um, you know, still getting out there to 17 or 18,000 hertz, um, which is it's pretty darn good. And um, the, uh, the Type 2 got out, you know, to 20,000 hertz, and the metal tape got out there too. So, and both of those, you know, performed outstanding too. But it just shows you that a Type 1 tape can make a first class recording as long as it's biased correctly. And with the Nakamichi Dragon had the advantage of calibrating that particular tape formula for the Dragon, for that particular tape deck. So, so, so truly that is an advantage. But it just shows that, I, I guess don't, don't just you know, walk by Type 1 cassettes. And I'm sure there's other cassettes, the Sony Type 1 cassette. Maybe it's a, a rare bird and it's an excellent tape. There's so many tapes out there, as you guys know. You know, I mean, who made them? Who makes them? Who knows? You know, but with the three I tried, the Sony Type 1, the TDK Type 2, and the Fuji Metal, they all can do an excellent job and make... Uh, make recordings that are very, very close uh, to the source. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and have a great day. Visit VintageAudioAddict.com for more repair and restoration tips on your vintage audio equipment.